Hello guys, it's Unders, and in this video, I'm gonna explain some of the FL Studio mixer routing, especially sends and buses. Now firstly, just to separate the two, um, a send is generally going to be something that has an effect on it, that you want to have your dry signal, but you also want to have the effect be heard, something like a delay or a reverb, or some kind of parallel effect you want to have going on. Whereas a bus is going to be something where you send multiple other channels to all be mixed together. In a project, let's have a look at how we can do the two and how we can set them up. So in this particular project on my mixer, we can see here I've got drums, bass, vocal, inst, and effects. And these five different colored options here are all buses. So if I was to solo just drums, and if I hold option and click the button here, it will have everything rooted to it still highlighted. If we were to move it to a section that has some drums, for example, we now just get the drums of the track. And as you can hear, a benefit to this is any processing can be done to everything at once. Something like a filter, for example, could filter down the entire drum track. So how would we make that? For an example, I'm gonna make a completely fresh track and we're going to make that our new drums bus and I'll show you how we would do it. So in the mixer, we can go to the slider across the bottom and we can get ourselves an empty mixer channel. In this case, I've got 44 still free, and I'm gonna bring that right to the left-hand side next to the previous drums. So highlight the channel, so it's highlighted green. Hold shift, and we can use our mouse wheel to bring it anywhere in the mixer. And we're just gonna bring it right to the start. I just find it best to use the first five channels in the mixer and always have them set up as buses. But for this example, this is how we would move this. So now it's in place, we can press F2. That's gonna let us rename it. We're gonna call it example bus. And we're gonna tap F2 again to give it a randomly assigned color till we find something that's not already there. So this is our example bus. And if we highlight it like we did with the drums, we can see that nothing is currently going to it. So nothing else has been soloed. So for argument's sake, let's say I just want to send a couple of sounds to this bus from the drum break. Let's send just the kick and the break to our example bus. So let's go over to the break channel itself here, and we're gonna look at our routing at the bottom. We can see these green wires going off in three different directions. And we can see that our drums bus here actually has a input signal. We can see it also goes to the instrument bus here and is faded out, and there is no volume signal. To connect these and disconnect these, there's a small arrow just above the plugin icon here. And if we click it, it will disconnect making that connection no longer valid. We can send that to the example bus. And now if we solo our example bus, our break is in there. We can repeat the same thing with the kick. And this example bus is now a break and kick bus. So if we were to hold option and solo, we've got our kick and break sent just specifically to that bus. It's important to note that the buses are also always rooted to the master. So the drums bus, for example, is rooted to the master uh, and the bass is rooted to the master. But what we do know is the kick that now is rooted to the drums and our example bus, I'll take it off the example bus, it does not route to the master. It always goes via the buses before it goes into the master. If we were to send it to both, by default, it will be routed to the master. We would now get the signal twice. This is gonna cause some issues, especially with volume and mixing. We just want it to go via the bus and the bus is the send then into the master. Now, the other thing we have are sends. And sends allow us to have effects or multiple things sent to a single effect. So what we'll do here is we'll take this snare track and we'll solo it. And you can hear it's already sent to a send track and we can follow its routing across the bottom of the mixer here. And if we drag it along, we can see it actually goes to H verb just here. And what we'll do, we'll move it along so we can see them side by side. Now with the send, we do almost the same process. So here I've got my reverb and the snare and it's 
sent to here. The reverb will have an effect on it that then may go to a bus or may go directly out to the master as well. So in this case, the snare goes into the reverb and the reverb goes directly out to the master. Now, what I could do is actually send HVerb into the drum bus and make it so that the reverb here was only being processed on those drums and then I could send different parts of the drum into it. So HVerb, for example, here is selected. We would take that all the way down here. We would disable it from the master, send it to the drum mix. And now we could do things like also add our shakers, our percussion. We could do things like our percussion, break and shaker all to this as well. Yeah, and we can route these individually to HVerb and give them their own input level. Here we're controlling the amount that the shaker goes into the reverb. And that allows us to just use one reverb plugin, but send multiple things to it and get the same effect, which is far more efficient a way of working. And then by sending it into its bus, it's then processed with the rest of the drums as well, instead of having to be processed separately. And that guys is how you can use mix buses and sends in the FL Studio Mixer.